So the next speaker is Nobuo Sato. Please. <laughs> All right. First, I thank the organizer for the invitation. Um, so again, going 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 to this. Um, mysteries of how to describe the high PT. I'm going to go to the mystery of that in the semi-inclusive BIS case. Um, um, I'm going to present some uh, high order calculation. Uh, is there any marker here? And, and I realize that maybe for the sake of not confusing people, uh, Berna this morning showed a calculation uh, for this observable. Um, Right, and it was the higher order of that. Now, when I mean higher order here, it would mean put here on top of this um, the lepton um, kinematics. So it's the NLO of that. Okay. So in the case of what Bernard showed this morning, essentially Q, if, you know, the flow to the photon was integrated. In this case, I'm keeping the kinematics of, of the left and also things. All right. Um, so, um, so I'm just going to go slowly again back to the beginning, just to make sure we are not missing anything. And this is information that most of you know. In semi-inclusive PIS, we got the incoming uh, proton that um, gets scattered with the incoming photon and then we observe a PT. Now, whether we integrate over all PT or versus we fix a PT, this, you know, from experimental point of view is kind of trivial, but from <laughs> point of view it's not. And there are some interesting uh, um, differences when you <coughs> consider the, the integrated versus the unintegrated. Um, as happened with Ted, uh, this is ca a cartoon that Ted also showed on Monday. Essentially, I'm looking at the kinematics of the outgoing hadron. So this is the PT of the hadron. This is the rapidity of the hadron. And then the incoming proton rapidity is more or less somewhere here. And so if the rapidity of the observed hadron is more or less here, this is associated with the fracture uh, uh, target, target fragmentation region. Uh, in the other side, if the, if, the, if the hadron is produced with a highly negative rapidity, this is the so called current fragmentation region associated with TMD factorization. <laughs> then if I produce something with high PT, I have the same current fragmentation in the Collian framework. So my interest is basically try to understand these kinematics. Uh, the claim is that by choosing uh, a clever kinematic factor in C, we can isolate the samples only on this region, essentially, right? And then we are not sensitive on that part. And so we can actually disrupt, you know, access nuclear structure information on these flows. Um, and, and, and the point is that different regions are sensitive to different factorization or, or mechanism. That's, that's, that's the message of this. Um, so I don't want to go into this fight about, you know, matching. PMDs and PDFs, as happened before. Uh, but all I want to say is that in the QD integrated case, you deal with basically two non perturbative unknowns, which is the collinear PDF and fragmentation. But if you go to the QD differential, then you have four unknowns, which are the, the two TMDs and the two collinear. Okay? And so, in principle, as I said, experimentally, it's very trivial. Uh, sort of relating these two things because essentially it's a Riemann sum, right? You just basically collapse the events uh, in, in the QT space from going from here to here. But theoretically, you know, uh, it was so complicated that it deserved a paper uh, where John and Ted was involved to show how to relate this thing. So this thing is kind of trivial experimentally, but theoretically it's not. And so the question that I've been sort of chasing now for a while is can we actually validate? Sort of this picture in nature, you know. Okay, so analytically it sounds good, but can we actually see that this is really happening? So uh, for the for the QT integrated <coughs> case, you know, this is basically almost textbook uh, of physics. So I don't need to explain how collinear factorization works. So just you know, without stressing too much about the QT uh, differential case. So just to remind you, 
you know, if I'm in the current uh, TMD region, which is this, so you have to imagine that there is a triangle here, and then um, this TMD region has a small PT, so the observed PT of the hadron is produced by intrinsic transverse momentum and ongoing small transverse momentum. Uh, and this is the physics associated with the W term where we describe this thing in TMDs. On the other hand, if I'm here in the upper block here, the PT is actually recalling a hard plume radiation. And so this PT is not, has nothing to do with these tiny PTs of the intrinsic scale. And so that's, that's the name, that's gone to the name of fixed order. There is a debate that, you know, whether this is actually factorizable or not. Um, but the construction that exists, to my knowledge, is basically these two things. And so, of course, in the middle, you have the matching because you need to, you know, there's an overlapping region. So you have to make sure that it matches accurately. Um, so an important question here is about, about these PDs. What do, we, what do we mean by this when it's small or large? Okay. How do we actually conceptualize it theoretically? And, and the, 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 the formulation is based on this scale separation, which is QT of Q where QT is pH per divided by Z. And the Z is basically, you know, in the usual series Z. Um, so whenever this number is very, very small, you will go into the TMD region, or whenever it's large or acute, then we are in the fixed order region. So this is basically the step. Okay. Uh, notice that I'm saying, I'm stressing here that the cross section describable in terms of EMTs will be when QT is much, much more. This is very important. Um, I'm not going to bore you with these details, but essentially in a recent paper, we argue why, you know, on some formal grounds, why this is actually the relevant scale separation. And so the logic that which you can find, you know, in, the, in this paper more carefully is basically we consider, you know, the type of, the type of propagators that can go inside of this blob, and then essentially one can say that, you know, in principle is basically the virtuality over Q square, which is a relevant Lorentz invariant uh, a quantity that, you know, tells us how big is the transverse momentum. And uh, we can actually relate this thing in, in a very, reducing back on level of calculation, essentially that this ratio is basically sandwiched between this QT of Q. And so from here, you can more or less say that it's, it's actually QT of Q, the relevant scale separation to understand series. So again, if Q is much more than Q, we are in the TMD region, and in this order Q is basically large numbers. Okay, so the phenomenology which exists of, uh, about these TMDs, and I'm plotting here essentially the compass multiplicities on the Ethereum. Uh, this is an old work by the Ansel Minos group using the Gaussian ansatz. Uh, you guys all know about that. There is a more recent work done by the Fabia group. And you can see that the picture is kind of successful, right? You can say that, well, we are describing the data with them well, was, was a problem. Well, the problem is that when you look at the details more carefully, you can start seeing that there are samples that has QT or Q that are actually quite large. And, and then still all these calculations are within the concept of the W term, the TMD. Either it is the Gaussian ansatz or it's the CSS version as is here. But the TMDs are actually only valid for a, Q, a very narrow region where Q is much, much smaller than one. So, um, so I, you know, I decided to revisit this thing myself. What, what, what was going on phenomenologically? So just to remind you, uh, the, just to give you an, an idea of how is the leading order expression goes. So this is this expression that I wrote here. Uh, you get basically the standard factorization in linear physics. How about PDF and uh, fermentation functions. And um, one important thing that this is my three cents for EIC is that uh, to me, this observable, our high PT is very sensitive to PDFs. Okay, why is that? Because if you actually, you know, if you actually probe the whole spectrum with high PT, uh, you will be probing basically different moments of the PDF and fragmentation. So, you know, this observable to me could be a unique thing in a way to access, you know, collinear and fragmentation function. And somehow people are not realizing that. And interestingly, we can actually, you know, put here a polarized version. So then we will have basically access to polarized. And then the interesting thing is that 
a lead in order, we also have a gluon contribution. So we can, in principle, also extract delta G R. Okay, so what I do is I plug, I take this formula here, use some modern pattern density, CJ15, just because I belong to that group, uh, and then the DSS07 fragmentation function. And this is what I, what I found, right? And so this is basically the same data set that it was shown before. This plot is a little bit busy, but let me just go through very carefully. So what is plotted is basically data over theory at leading order. Okay, and there is a different bins in Q squared and X. And on each of these bins, I'm plotting the data on theory as a, 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 as a function of QT. Now this yellow band that you see here is a QT that is larger than Q. So as you can see, in most of the bins, essentially almost 90% of the time, all the spectrum are in the QT larger than Q region. Um, and then if you look at the data on theory, you know, you can see a spectacular failure. So that's the, essentially go on the same line of what happened before that we actually kind of describe the PT spectrum. Um, okay, so, so, so I think that the challenge is that while we really like to understand TMDs, um, where the TMDs are basically these tiny corners, okay? Uh, I think it's kind of not satisfactory to having, you know, doing a good phenomenology only these corners, but then ignoring the rest. That to me is kind of uh, not satisfactory. So, so the big question is, I don't know what's going on in this high PT region. This small PT region in terms of phenomenology, I think is sort of more or less under control. So, you know, people can actually do TMD fits, but the high PT region is basically not under control. So in this formula here, which is related to QT differential versus QT integrated, uh, I would say that maybe this guy, W10, is more or less okay. The fixer, I have no idea what's going on here. If I don't know this, then I just suppose nothing about the asymptotic. If I know nothing about these three things, then I don't know nothing about these three things. And then I don't know if it is a fair connection. So I don't know what I'm really going on. Um, so I'm just trying to you know, understand you know, most, more carefully, piece by piece. So one thing is, is this part actually working? Is this part actually understandable? At least, let's start with something simple to see if this thing actually works. Um, okay, so one, one, one question that one can ask, for instance, is, you know, if this stuff actually works, you know, how important is the, the spectrum, right? Uh, the QT spectrum um, to combine the full integrated cross-section. And so I, I, I basically cal calculate, you know, the cumulative distribution function. Uh, 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 which is basically I defined here, and and so what you can see here is that you know these vertical lines here show the range of Q T equal to Q. So if you go to if you go to small x, then you will see that you know you know it saturates much far away uh, 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 beyond Q T, which means that in the small x region, you know the total cross section will you know the Q T integrated cross section receives significant contribution from the tails. So you can see from here that, you know, and, you know, if we understand this, we need to necessarily understand this, otherwise it's kind of inconsistent with perturbative QCD. That's, that's sort of the point of this plot here. Okay, so then, as I said, I want, to, I want to revisit what's going on here. And I did a quick study just because I can also fit pattern density and fragmentation functions. So I took the, Q C the CDC QT integrated in terms in at next leading order, and then include this, you know, the spectrum uh, of CDC QT integrated compass. Uh, and then just to make sure that I'm not doing curve fitting, I also add the E plus E minus data for patterns. Uh, and then I use some pattern densities that I fit myself with the global data. And then what I found is that, that relative to the DSS 07, some changes occurs in the fragmentation function, especially uh, for the gluon distribution. Somehow the gluon distribution tends to be high Z. Uh, and in fact, this was something observed by the recent analysis by the NMPDF. Um, and so this is the, you know, the results when I do these fits only to the QT integrator. So this is the E plus E minus data 
almost perfect, you know, a crew fitting. Uh, and this is the, you know, the result when I do this thing for Compass QT integrated. Um, so at this point, at this point, I will say we can put a check mark here. Okay, this one actually works. So it's not, it's not entirely, you know, a, 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 a disaster. We can put a check mark here. And so if I have a check mark here, now let's revisit with this new fragmentation function what's going on in the disorder part. And, and this, this, is, this was the old prediction with using the DSS07. So if I refit the fragmentation function, I can go something like this. So it's not, you know, you have to, let me just go back and forward. So you can improve in certain regions of X. You can, you know, let's say somewhere here, you can have a, some impact factor of two or something like that, but definitely it's not going to uh, improve overall. So I cannot make that, you know, uh, just by returning the fragmentation. You know, but by the way, this is thanks to Bernard because he put on a problem that I had. But now you're comparing the model next to the model, right? So, so. Well, well, <laughs> so the hard part of the, or, or the hard part that I used to extract fragmentation was in a low. Right. Uh, and then, yes, this is basically, uh, sorry, uh, I have a mistake here. This is not in a low, this is in a low. Okay. This is, okay, fine. this ought to be in a low. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Good. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, why is it spoiled? Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. I was only looking at that. Thing sorry, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. So, the met, the met, the, the, sorry, Is the high set? I don't, I, the right color. Is it high set or small set? High Z. So somehow, uh, the, the, one of the reasons is that I'm not including you know, the, 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 the DP charge hydron data, which is sensitive to high Z. So probably I don't, I'm not describing very well this fragmentation of the high Z. Because I was trying to focus mostly in the intermediate somewhere, uh, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.6 ish, you know, in Z. Um, but you, you know, this is more or less trying to get a you know, feeling of what kind of improvement we can actually get, right? Um, so, okay. you know, I can do a more thorough job to, include, to, to improve the high Z data. But the message here is that just by tuning the fragmentation functions, I'm not, I'm not going to fix the whole problem. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to put a check mark here because at least the integrated version works. Um, still, there is some issues here, and I don't understand how to fix it completely. Now, what happens is that there are strong indications that that uh, at Hera, it was shown by the Leo et al. around 2005 that you can actually get a significant k factors just by going to the next order uh, of this observable. Okay, not considering the Leo. And you can see here that it was almost an order of magnitude. So while this is kind of not very appealing, you know, that order of magnitude type, you know, improvement can happen, we decided to do a sanity check for ourselves, computing this thing ourselves and making sure that we see this kind of stuff. Um, so this is a, a, a work that right now is in preparation. Um, Do you state that? You know, integrated in uh... Q. Yes. Which means uh, this one. <coughs> right, this is the observable. It's only differential in the. The Q is in the interval to show that. Right. right. Okay. So, what we wanted to do is to verify that we actually see this kind of you know, behavior. You know, just for the sign to check. Um, and so we went to the trouble. It took us some a year or two years to finish this stuff. Uh, essentially, we have to calculate, you know, a bunch of diagrams, essentially. This, the procedure, I'm not going to repeat it because Bernard explained it in, Paro, in a very nice way this morning. But essentially, we just have to calculate all the two, two, uh, two virtual graphs. Uh, and then render them using Passarino to get the double pole and the single poles, and then calculate the tree graphs, um, um, and then integrate by hand all the phase space to cancel with 
the singularities, and we check that all the singularities cancel. It's supposed to be as in the standard way. Um, those are the diagrams that we have at boom term or virtual corrections, and this is the rest of the channels that we have. I mean, I'm just allocating, you know, collect, you know, collecting kind of the Feynman diagram we have. There are tons of Feynman diagrams we calculated. Um, okay, so I'm not going to bother with all the details of this. Sufficient to say that it's very complicated. There are tons of diagrams, but then we managed to cancel all the poles. And when, I, when we compare now with the original code of, of the Leo, this is what, what we found. Now you can see that essentially pretty much everywhere, especially high X, we get a perfect agreement. So as far as I'm concerned, the next linear calculation that Galileo got 2000 to 2005 is actually consistent. So this is essentially a, check, a sanity check <coughs> that does the reality. You know, we can reproduce their results. There are some differences, slight differences, a small, small X. Uh, we find we. We think that there are some issues with how they did the mixed channel with a couple of uh, attempts that it was missing. But the point is that you know, we do have now an, a working version of the NLO benchmark. OK. So equipped with this next to in order, the question now is, well, with a new prediction with the repeat the fragmentation function. And this is what I get. So, now you can see that the picture is that basically almost flat around one, except for the high z that one. So, so the, the, the message here is that you, know, you, you, know, you have an improvement by using you know, repeating fragmentation function. And if you're on top of that put the NLO, there will be a significant improvement. However, you can see that there are regions where it's not working perfectly well. But that's okay in this region because in this region, you know, the Q, you know, the TMDs are going to matter more. Okay, but at least in these corners of the face space, you can see that that are much better under control. Um, okay, so I'm not going to say that I have a perfect check mark, but at least it's somewhere in between a question mark and a check mark. Um, and so we are going to that direction and trying to fulfill this scheme of whether. You know, the double plus y and the QT integrate can be realized in nature. And um, my time is almost up, I think. Uh, so, you know, my talk is not about all the excitement of the steam physics. You know, it's just the first term. And the first term is very important because it goes as the denominator of, of all asymmetry. So, uh, that's our goal. So, I think, I think there is a possibility that in certain range of kinematics, we can actually fulfill all these glorious double plus y description uh, methodology that we have. But certainly I would say that, you know, there are corrections that still needs to be understood for our power correction I went to matter. But I will stop here, thank you. Questions? Can you show us comparison to big data? The uh, no, I don't have it now. But it works. Um, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's so awesome. I think so. So 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 this thing here, you know, this Z here shows that it's not going to work just because. Of it. So what I think is that I need to put this rig data, and then constrain the high Z, and maybe it will improve. Um, but again, you know, I didn't do it because it's more complicated. Why <laughs> not for me to do that? So um, the, the statement is basically drop lean border PDFs or fragmentation functions for what it matters. Use next to leading order this extraction. And then there is hope on, on describing any existing CDF data. Use next to leading order hard kernels for the observable, meaning that this next to leading law there is mission. No, no, no. Next year is fixed order calculation. So I no, I mean I'm 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 thinking about this low QT region. You mean these tiny corners? I think those tiny corners, as Pavia group have shown, works. But with completely different symbol. I mean no. completely different. Uh, you mean uh, you didn't use the there is no good uh, Annotation function here. What do you mean? 
organization functions or training functions. Yeah, but uh, there is no, no role or almost no role. No, in our field, there is no role played by the blue on that application function. I mean, so, so some part of the non perturbative EMD will change because you have, you have an pre-factorization part of the EMDs that you know, talk to the collinear right. uh, fragmentation. So there will be some change, but I'm, what, what I'm pointing out is that as far as <coughs> small PT that I'm concerned, I think you can actually describe the data. The problem is to have a consistency across all PT, and which is essentially missing if you are looking at this flow here. Right. So, Now, to the point to which you're now, the form of normalization for each of these colored lines are on the top. Right? So the normalization, normalization of the data is one. I, I never no, think of that. Normalization of the colored line, yeah. which is the one. Okay, so you mean because you guys exactly. normalize with respect to the so, first name? So you have to be careful when you draw different conclusions because. This holds up to the normalization part. If, if, you, if you don't allow for one normalization factor for each single line, which means all single colors in that okay. picture. Fair enough. So let's, let's put here not a check mark, but rather a check mark and a question mark, you know, and say that maybe there are thing, things to do. But to me, the, fo the focus of my task here was this guy which was completely nonsense, right? This is totally nonsense. So we are now uh, here. It's not perfect, but there is a hope that you know, one can actually improve. So close to one. Uh, I have two questions. One is that um, in the line of what Alexei asked. Um, so Marco Startman tells me that um, they, of course, in their fragmentation fit, they include Alice data, which are very high energy, but also at high PT. And um, traditionally, if you use, you know, say DSS 07, you would have a theory that's way too high for the Alice data for charge head ones, right? You like a factor two of one or so. So believing that you could use those data in the fragmentation analysis, um, you would then expect that the fragmentation function at IZ should anything should be decreased quite a bit with respect to DSS 07. And that's in fact what they find. So they have a much smaller set of fragmentation functions uh, now. Okay. So I wonder how that was so in general, all of them, not just the blue one. The blue one mostly, I think, but I uh, think the others as well. And so um, that would sort of not be in line with this study where you find a factor two enhancement for the Right, group. but I think, I think there, are, there are two competing effects to make this block. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, right. And then the other one is the possible tuning of the fact. Right, right. So I would say that to a much extent, the NLO is really important. Okay, so, <laughs> so yeah. you know, if you don't put the NLO, no, no, right. it's over. I mean, yeah, uh, sure. Then there could be a more, I mean, I think, I think this, this opened up this possibility for the community to actually explore consistency check of this low energy data sure. against high energy. Is it really the case that fragmentation can try and the universe? So, uh, I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, I think this pretty much looks like, still, you know, it's not. Um, well, <coughs> are you saying so, uh, you, you need to next to the right? But they did. They did. They did. They did. The same direction as Rana and Alexei already. So, DSS, the new ones, is NLO. It's not a leading model fit, it's an NLO fit to all the world data in plus and minus, <coughs> and also the CD state. And I really think it would be extremely critical that you take this, as we discussed already at the Gordon conference. That you take your fragmentation functions and try to reproduce it as a big data at 200 and 500 GB. That is the data which is sensitive to gluon fragmentation. See this because gluon goes in also only in the evolution 
So the evolution is not the right way to determine human fragmentation. I really think it is extremely critical to do this test. I do agree. I think so. So, so this Before is not the end of the story. So, yeah. so, so as, as I replied to Werner, there are two com there are two competing effects. I would say that the NAO is the key player, and then the returning the fragmentation part is sort of a subdominant player, but it needs to be tested. So, I mean, all I want to say is that either we live in this world or we live <laughs> in this world where you know it gets you know. It is kind of very crazy. So uh, I think there is a hope. So all I'm saying is that there is hope to improvements. You know, I do agree that this has to be, you know, fit simultaneously with all the GP data from Alice, from uh, uh, from Rick, you know, consistently. Now, the thing is, I haven't done it yet. So yeah, true, but okay. you, that, that is fine. But still, we can use only a certain uh, amount of data and trying to check whether you can produce the other ones. But, uh, that, that is fine. Uh, I understand that it is difficult to fit all of this. But ESSS 07 is outdated. Right. Oh, it's the, one, the only reason that I wanted to update this is because ESS did not include the compass uh, uh, um, QT integrated uh, CDS data. Because I wanted to have basically a set of fragmentation functions that are tuned to the same compass data, QT integrated data. That was the only reason for me to, to look at that. Maybe the latest is the latest is only Hyans and Canyons. They didn't update yet in Charge Hardware. Right. Which, however, should be very similar. Charge Hardware, Hyans and Canyons? Yeah. But the modifications, as far as I remember, the modifications from the sum of the fragmentation control are not zero. So they are being Right. Yeah, I think. For this problem, with a factor of almost a five or ten difference, and it's not the one solution. I think uh, we need to combine several things to do it. One, we could like stress your effect, which is related to enhanced on the call part, and also the fitting. But there's another important things uh, have not been discussed that much here. The sending for DIS for this data is very unique. It says you push to uh, edge of phase space. For this when the uh, PT is much uh, larger than Q, the regional phase space, the more crystal value. So in that sense, the power correction is very, very important. Because a leading power form is a value needs, you know, fragmentation function, power distribution, you need a large, sufficient large phase space for it to shop to generate a fragmentation. <coughs> but however, if you go to the edge of phase space, like this particular case, you're setting the DIS, power correction is important. We have actually have a paper coming out, so unfortunately we have not finished it. Take a simplest, most conservative approach, you will see. I can easily boost the cross-section production rate in the near the edge of phase space by a factor of four or five from power correction. You can, because the multi is so low, you can produce pi plus, k plus directly from the collision upon the plot. You pay a penalty to produce a quark, anti-quark in the same direction. But on the other hand, you enhance tremendously the hydronization for the pair to become the bond state. So that part of phase three, the power correction is very important. Then uh, you would agree that if uh, power corrections are so relevant, then they will affect seriously also the collinear PDF extractions of fragmentation functions. For this, for the integrated part, actually, it's small. <laughs> like, okay, you have a PT sure. spectrum like that. So the contribution for a low PT region for the project actually is small because you have enough phase space. So that when you integrate the whole area under the curve of PT distribution, it's dominated by low PT. Oh, so so you, you think that there would be power corrections which would be higher and higher. Well, but and here is a close for that, right? Yeah. I mean, but I think that if you go to small x, that's not entirely true because the saturation to one it occurs, you know, to large PT. So, you know, in this region of high, in the balance region, it is true. It will be mostly dominated by the small PT. But if you go to this region of kinematics, I think that, you know, uh, depend, you know, you will, you know, the collinear puffers will receive contributions from- Well, sure, collinear will receive contribution. But the point is, you have a root S fixed. 
boil indigo PG, they only have one half scale Q square. The Q square over the there, so that's a phase space you vary. And now you look for event with the Q square the same large, but also you require that part have log PG. You cut off your phase space dramatically, so you push you to edge of phase space. If I do the integrated form, I'm not at the edge of phase space. I need the more in the middle part of phase space. I mean, yeah, this is something that basically also happens in resummation, although that's you know, because yeah. you push your things to get uh, threshold, and then uh, once you integrate, um, you will turn into one of the Q squared power fractions, which is exactly. smaller for the So it's a combination of a stretch or summation, which can be summed up a particle part, and also there's a power fraction right. running. So it's a combination of two, I think, eventually will help us to sum it up. Then want to call some? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Each one you wanted to call. I have a second question. When you compare the two NLO calculations, it seemed to me that um, the agreement is not really so good because you know this is like four decades on, on a on the Y scale. And, and even though you know the curves seem very similar, I mean if you plot them, you know, one on one, if you say take the ratio, I think it, I would imagine there's a 20% or so difference. So the data points are like somewhere here. Exactly. But I think um, the deviations, you know, so the difference between theirs and ours right. are not going to be as big as the difference with the data. So No, of course not. But I mean, there should be only one answer, right? And there should be identical, right? And so 20% right. so is not good enough, I think, um, um, in terms of agreement, right? It's, uh, you know. there, are, there are some, so when, we check, when I check the code, there are some Mismatch right. with, the, with the because apparently some I think it's a bug uh -huh. that they're going to some certain mixtures of the cross channel because you know in the interference then you have like a mixture of the charges yeah and, right. and somehow for us it <coughs> makes sense like all the combinations so I haven't we haven't you know corrected entirely their code to no, no, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is somehow promising that you know after because if you know we were very far away initially, I know, yeah, 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 right. Uh, but now we are getting to a point where it's very close, maybe not hundred percent close. But I mean, so, I would just imagine that it would be really good to to have yeah, because, because, right. Really, but I think, I think because we're going to use this for a while, I think so. Right, but well, an, an, an important aspect is is to validate. So, so what I'm chasing here is more about up to which extent the NLO corrections matter, right? No, no, really? sure. And I think that this is the sort of the thing that you now expect. You now you have two different calculations that more or less give more or less similar answer, and this is how far you can push the NLO calculation. Um, but you know, I agree that you know, probably Felix wanted to get this thing perfectly right before doing jet physics with IDIC with this, but <laughs> work in progress. <laughs> Can I have some things about, about the so that, that we showed this factor of 10 right, enhancement for the envelope of the previous five measures. Um, right, must have been talked about. Right. Did, did you try that now with your code as well? Did you also get no. Uh, you, you did try, you're not know, getting I didn't try to reproduce it. There, there is a trick because uh, it turns out that with Hera, <laughs> with the Hera kinematics, um, there is a bunch of cuts, and it is highly not trivial how to implement it. And so, you know, for me, it was like, okay, if I can, I'm interested in only this thing right now. So if this works, it's a good proxy. But I agree, you know, I, I, we, will, we will reproduce this thing, you know, with, with our code. But so for the other um, data sets, you're getting a more reasonable, or, or smaller K factor um, from the analog. Yeah, the K factor here is not as big as that. Actually, when you look at this stuff here, even the K factor is order of magnitude. Actually, the, the uncut thing is like at least five times bigger. So after you, after you impose the cuts, you know, even the ELO is something somewhere like here, and then you can bring it up after the cut. So it's kind of non-trivial. Uh, so to me, you know, that it, this is not a, like a place where I want to sort of compare side by side or cross an hour, but rather compare here that it's much kind of simpler. One, one thing is because this observable here integrates over all z, so it in principle involves small z region 
where I don't need any factorization. So uh, this, on the other hand, is differential in the left and right. So it's kind of more similar to say the back and forth factorization. The kind of the right to have is more common. Is an inferior limit of z than error. Not the right to z, the z is zero. So then for them, it, it translates into rapidity. So they have like a, they look at the forward rapidity. That was, but it's, it's kind of difficult to, to, to have a perfect match. Now, yeah. it's always so not good to use a header data. Say again? The user to compare with header data is uh, a good difference. It's always different. But, uh, but it's a good idea. It's like it's investable. So um, for individual, yeah. for uh, so uh, we can continue for let's say another uh, 10 15 minutes and uh, of course there is there are questions to more but we can also continue with the more general uh, discussion so let's not uh, confine ourselves necessarily to this particular topic if you have questions that you want to raise also referring to other topics uh, just a naive question. So NLO gives you an order of magnitude direction. Um, is it, um, would you have to go to N NLO to, in addition to power correction and fragmentation stuff to ultimately get to tune it to where it needs to be? So, um, so I, I think that, well, maybe I. Someone else can answer, but to my understanding, for instance, in, in the case of Dreyer Yang, the initial k factor from ALO to ALO is huge, a lot of factor two or something. Then it became, you know, just by doing NLO, it was okay, and then all the phenomenology went from that, you know, see what, you know, E bar minus U bar takes factor from this kind of stuff. Uh, then I think they did the NLO calculation, and then it went smaller. Uh, so, do we, are we, I mean, I think ideally it would be nice you know, to, to, to have the NNLO calculation for this, but <coughs> realistically, <laughs> this was already a hell of a problem. The bottom of the yeah, I don't know. This is how far we can push it. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe then I will jump with them. Yeah, you know, factor 10, of course, is uh, ridiculous in some sense, right? Yeah. I mean, this clearly indicates that there's something more going on. Of course, you know, the perturbative part is one part. You could you know, do a summation, see, um, right. see how that stabilizes it at all. But I mean, it must clearly mean there is new channel. Power 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 power. I mean, and then we have a factor 10. Yeah. Yeah. Based on perturbation theory, normally, there's no huge factor 10. Right. Sure. It's like a hybrid component of that. Yeah. If you look at a leading order and a next leading order, that kind of is new channel. You know. But let, let, let's be a little bit more concise about the factor of 10, right? Because this is a ratio. <laughs> okay. 10 is up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's, that's not so good. it's not entirely 10. Yeah. So we, got, we are a factor of 3, 4, 5, you know. Yeah. I think that's doable. Mm -hmm. And it's not 10. 10 is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, or maybe this will get us talk, but maybe I'll be the best person to answer. I was just curious. So, Gardner, you and George Sherman in 2009, a PRD looking at dihedron collection at the lower energy. Yes. You know, with the resummation, that seemed to be better than the Galleon. Indeed, yes. Do you have any comments? Um, um, that's that? a really good question. I. Um, I don't have a good answer to that because um, it turns out that um, it's hard to say. I mean, the, 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 it seems to be partly kinematics too. So, if anything like a dihedron or like a totally induced, totally induced gradient, which is pair kinematics, so it seems to be more well behaved than a high energy single inclusive calculation. Um, that is an experience that I've made, you know, numerous times. So Dreyan is perfectly well defined and well behaved. I think it's totally inclusive. Dreyan, if it's a high QT, already it becomes a little tricky, as we saw. We go to um, 
to IPT pions, for example, single intrusive pions, that's a really messy in some sense. And even the summation is in some sense tricky and messy. You do hadron pairs, it's again very different. You can, I, you know, I can give you some technical arguments why in the calculation uh, is better behaved, but it's, it's really um, an experience that I've made. And, um, it's not so, <laughs> not so easy to pin down. Um, yeah, I can make a number of technical solutions, <laughs> but I think it's not going to be very helpful. So it's 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 uh, I think we are yeah. looking at some of the same experiments from the same center of mass energy. Right. I mean, that's exactly what right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so any other questions, observations? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a nice comment, but if power corrections are indeed important, by pushing towards fitting the fermentation functions, can we feed some effects that they should belong to different? Situation into the fermentation functions, and that might create other problems later on if we try to use this fermentation function for something else. And see the power corrections, like it's the first thing that someone will think that the, the problem is not the y or the asymptote in the w term because you are really in a region where the w term should be valid, but still, you're a small pt. Where um, the contribution from the non periodic effects are important. So that's just a, it's a kind of question of comments. Like in a region where we don't really trust factorization, either collinear or or TMD, that would be feeding the fermentation. Should not. We should try. It depends. It depends a bit if you want to be. So then we go we don't go in the region of low PT. So then after the No, that's something about the logic and support. So for people that drinks and PFs, you have to take one. In principle, if you so if you carry this uh reasoning. Uh, to the end. So suppose that here it is we we see the importance of the power corrections. So we see the power corrections are important in the cinematics. Then one be very strict should avoid doing if one wants to be strict. Very yes. strict. Yes, we should not feed you the PDF. This experiment is not good for feeding some. You should say it's not good. You want that experiment. I mean, if it, is, but if this is not good, no, this, no, is, no, this is <laughs> this is Q square three point five twenty. Right. So I don't um, think one should be. Uh, I, I think just take. Uh, I think you shouldn't discourage people from doing measurements. Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I want, I want, I want, I want to this kind of theories to make non conclusions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's a good, there's a good reason why people, you know, when they focus on starting from the 90s or so on doing PDF analysis, they more and more went entirely to collider data, to error data, to some data in the genome. Um, simply because if you're interested in just two codes PDFs and you want to study the physics or something, then you, you will use those data sets that will give you least troubles in terms of this and yes. stuff. But um, now that we have uh, you know, this experience, of course, how we can do Google Dust and go backwards and look back at these uh, things and we find surprises, right? I mean, in the 80s, people used data of this kind or the Brian data that we discussed to show that. You see these things very right, right? Because PDFs are very fully known that they could be much larger than ones we have today. Yes. So they do it was much better. And so people use this as a post of this thing. But at the end we say, I know it doesn't work anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> so because we have this past history. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So but um, I think they can probably, probably learn a lot from this somehow. And 
and maybe we can, you know, like maybe one task is to identify um, observables that are maybe more, um, you know, more um, telling of power fractions, for example, that show them more strongly, right? I mean, in principle, power fraction should have a tendency to, to you know, power suppressive, right? <laughs> and so you should they, they somehow, you know, see that in some sense, right? This is one thing to look at, and we find, gee, it doesn't, doesn't work, but maybe we can look at it in a different way. Maybe experimentalists can find yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, put yeah. in the data that might be more data. I mean, there is a challenge because for this treatment that we do directly, I like in the phenomenological, you know, have a systematic treatment yeah. of our challenge. Yeah. So, well, all right. And uh, I think we don't have to have something more solid, even theoretical. It's the best treatment. Yeah, well, I, I, in some sense, I really agree with uh, what Madonna said. You should not discourage people doing measurements, no, <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially when you can make such a good measurement that it was, uh, it's really kind of what we want. If you're only interested in the app, of course, with the LGC, high quality, no. but for the PCD itself, mm -hmm. and the standard storm interaction, this is more interesting if you can yeah. have a good controlled measurement. It's just a different interpretation of the game of this data, which is uh, mm -hmm. probably we are forcing the theory to a region where the theory yeah, and you'd be ready to find his surprises. It's like, oh, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is, uh... I should have just forever. Although I sometimes do think that the data are just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But on the other side, we should say very well, we would like to have a measurement. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Not discouraging, but proposing. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. <laughs> like measure? I guess that's, that's where we're going for the EIC, right? It's, it's a very important high scale in comparison to the, the, the contrast measurements. They can get it in the cleaner picture. Yeah. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> uh, to be challenged. For instance, for the EAC discussion, I think it would be nice to have uh, the comparison between uh, the leading order and the next leading order in the kinematic to the EAC to see if these uh, big factors that uh, we see here in right, the exactly. right, right. Uh, right. <coughs> uh, the EAC. Yeah. Uh, when, when I'm thinking, for example, in, uh, in the talk of different different countries yesterday, we say that we have a series at high energy which is given by HERA. Actually, HERA just measure the pure things. And all that we want now from the cities is not what was measured by HERA. Mm -hmm. So for many things, probably HERA measurements are useless. And the, the only information the measure we have is from <laughs> Yeah, that's true. For example, HERA just measure multiplicity. I'm not able to find here. Sure, yeah, the advancement of so the, the whole field. So measure things that it's worth thinking about measuring any any more comments? Yeah. Okay, and if not, uh, I remind you that this afternoon we have no session, but the room uh, here is available if you want a discussion in groups. And of course, the offices are available. And so, coffee we'll break will be served. Coffee break will be there. Come here. Yeah, but it's still there. Where is the other desk? Oh, yeah, you cannot sit at the desk. That's, that's true. Unfortunately, our team has very limited sitting space. We had to deal with this. Uh, it, it cannot be. Um, if there is legal conditions, unfortunately, that's what we have to do. Sure, but so, so if there's uh, going to be a discussion, it will be great. No, we have to go as much So this room is reserved for us mm -hmm. this afternoon. So whenever you feel uh, that you want to discuss anything, you just come here, sit in small groups and big groups. It so will, will be informal uh, discussion. D dinner is at 6. Uh, we'll oh, yeah. probably okay. start from here. It's divers. If you guys want to. Come on your own, please do. We are 27 people who are there. There are still three spots if anybody hasn't responded. 
They will be 80% uh, credibility. Add it to your check, so don't add anything else. That's your thing. What do you say? Eight? 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 So, so you finally bring it to the first of all, you said six uh, here. No, six there. Six there. So, if you want to bring from here, what have you if you need office space, if you need office space, and you may ask your colleagues because some of the office are not really all uh, full, but maybe not everyone is here. So, for instance, the